Workers and advocates will hit the streets of Boston this week in a renewed campaign to narrow the wage gap, according to a survey by the Brookings Institute. The gap in Boston is the third largest in the country. A day of action will take place around the world, and tomorrow's events planned by groups in Boston are also tied to wage campaigns at the State House. Joining us are two guests from the Wage Action Coalition. We'd like to welcome a personal care attendant and member of 1199 SEIU, Cedric Powell, and an organizer with the coalition, Maddie Conway. Uh, thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I want to start with Cedric. Um, so why are you planning to take part in this? Um, I think that this is a good experience for everybody to get out and, sh and fight for 15. You know, um, I'm new to the PCA work. Now 15, we're talking about $15, $15 an hour. $15 an hour right? yeah. for a minimum wage. Um, I mean, this is a broad span, not just for PCA workers, but for those um, that are working for minimum wage now. And I feel that this is the best way to, you know, get out there and support the whole fight for everybody that, you know, we're all fighting for. Matty, uh, why is uh, this additional upward push so important? Because, you know, we just had a recent increase in the minimum wage. So this mobilization is really important um, that we're doing tomorrow because it's going to be the first uh, in the country. There's a National Day of Action on April 15th. Um, and so Boston is sort of taking off with the fight for 15 and um, beginning this fight here in our community because um, although we did just raise the minimum wage and we did earn uh, win earned sick time uh, for workers in Massachusetts, we have a lot of work to do to make sure that we're no longer, like you said before, uh, number three in wage inequality. Um, we're not proud of that here in Massachusetts and the Wage Action Coalition is um, ready to say that you know, we're not going to let this crisis continue, that it's time to stand up and say that although we've had these victories in the past, we have a long road to go before um, workers are making a living wage um, in this state. Cedric, everybody works for the money, uh, among other things, but uh, why did you choose this kind of work that you're doing? I'm working for a really, really good friend of mine, and I feel that this is our way to help those that are in need stay home you know, not end up in, you know, group homes and things of that nature. You know, this is, they could stay at home, they can, you know, everyday live in and, you know, still be out there getting fresh air and not be, you know, subjected to rules of where they can go and where they can't go and how much time, you know, they would have to spend, you know, in certain places. What's the most difficult thing for you to do in your job? Um, I think the most difficult thing is basically dealing with, you know, the client sometimes because of the fact that, you know, you're dealing with two personalities and sometimes you see things one way and they're going to see things another way. So a lot of times what I have to do is just say, hey, you know, as a PCA worker, I'm here to help. So that's what I'll do. I'll just help. Matty, uh, what about um, the pay level? Because, you know, people might say, well, yes, uh, that, that's higher than the minimum wage, which was higher than it used to be. But this is about trying to live in Boston, too. So w w w what's the rub here? Um, I'm sorry. Why, why is it so difficult? Explain that. I mean, I mean, for some people, it's obvious. But for some viewers, you know, who, who don't make that little amount of money, why, why is it so difficult? Certainly, yes. Um, workers who are doing low-wage jobs, um, and it's really interesting to point out that um, the jobs that are growing the fastest are low-wage jobs, jobs in retail, jobs in fast food and in the restaurant industry, in airports, um, you know, personal care, home care workers. Um, for folks who are doing those jobs and for working moms and dads that are providing for families, um, you know, the $11 an hour minimum wage that we will eventually get to just isn't enough to make rent in Boston. And for families to have to choose between putting food on the table and paying their rent or keeping the lights on or having medicine for their children is simply unacceptable. And so we believe that um, with the fight for 15 and with asking corporations who can't afford it to um, begin paying their share and, and really... Um, support the families who are doing this work, uh, we believe that it is a step towards making sure that everybody can afford to live um, and not be pushed out of their homes. Uh, Cedric, where, where do you feel the pinch when it comes to affording uh, life here? Rent. I mean, it's living in certain areas in Boston, you know, just living by a tea station, by a bus stop or anything can raise the price of your rent alone, you know, plus the fact that we have a lot of people in Boston, the state, you know, who don't have you know regular transportation to get certain places so it's like to have the money you know to spend for to get to work you know rent and like you were saying your yeah, electricity and things of that nature it's just you know what I'm saying it's oh I can't even think of the word for it but it's just ridiculous you know what I mean the price that of rent you know that we have here and 
the cost of living, you know, food on the table, like you were saying. I mean, sometimes it's just not that easy and it becomes a struggle. Maddie, I, you know, when you're trying to make change through this event this week or even up at the State House, uh, I'm sure you're going to meet some pushback uh, from employers. They're going to say, well, uh, you know, you're going to shrink the number of jobs out there. You know, there aren't going to be as many profits from this, uh, or even the cost of health care is going to go up. So, uh, I mean, they're going to have an argument for you, right? They certainly are, um, and that's why, you know, you mentioned the State House. that's why the Fight for 15 is really focused on, it's focused on fast food chains. The Wage Action Coalition is also focused on big box retailers like Walmart, um, corporations whose profits are unbelievable, and we just don't, we just don't accept that argument that um, a corporation who has billions of dollars in profits can't afford to raise the wages of workers who are trying to make ends meet. Um, it's it, it just doesn't make any sense. And we know that um, two thirds of workers who are performing low wage work are women. Um, and 40% of those workers are people of color. And so we also take issue in the coalition, not only with um, the issue of low wages, but what that means for families in the community. And so that can mean that gentrification pushes people out of their neighborhoods. That can mean that um, you know uh, folks are forced to work multiple jobs and not be able to spend time with their kids or be as involved in their children's education as they'd like. Um, and so, you know, we are simply saying, you know, the the benefit of, of $15 and, and going up towards a living wage is something that the communities need, and we don't accept um, the argument that big businesses can't afford to do that. So, Cedric, getting 15 why would that be important? What would that help you do that you can't do right now? Um, actually, that would give me some time off. I feel that now, you know, majority of my time is held up with work. You know, I would need extra hours, you know, just to make ends meet for the week, you know, and considering some jobs pay every two weeks, you know, it, that means that's more time away from home. That's more time that I would have to go to work, you know, when I'm not feeling well, I can't take the time off because of the fact that I don't work enough hours for sick time, you know, so it's like I need to at least have something a little steady to the point where I can get this little bit of time off so that way I can spend some time with my kids. You know, I mean, once I leave here, I'm straight back to work, you know, so. Maddie, uh, we should uh, leave our viewers with some information about what's planned, uh, and I guess you're going to have a big event tomorrow late in the afternoon, so talk a little bit more in details about when and where. We are, yes. So um, our event is from 4 to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Um, it is going to start at Forsyth Park, which is near the northeastern stop on the E branch of the Green Line, um, and it's right next to the MFA. So there's going to be a rally in Forsyth Park that's going to start at 4. We're going to have music, and we're going to have worker speakers like Cedric um, come and talk about their experiences in many, many different industries. Um, and then from there, folks are going to be marching um, into Back Bay, where we're going to be um, stopping at a few offices of some businesses that are, um, you know, perpetuating uh, the problem of low wage work here in Massachusetts. Um, and so we'll be sort of marching along a route. There's a, a map available on wageaction.org. If folks aren't able to make it down at four, you'll be able to see, we'll be live tweeting as well. You'll be able to see where the march is going to be if you'd like to meet us. And then we'll be ending at six right near the Boylston Tea Stop on Boston Common. Thank you both very much, Maddie Conway and Cedric Powell from the Thank Wage you. Action Coalition. We'll have more news in just a moment.